Welcome back cruisers. Today we're going to be visiting Curacao. We're going to be swimming with sea turtles at Playa Grande Beach and then we're going to head down to Casa Abo Beach where we'll test out exactly how water resistant my phone really is. I'll tell you all about it next. Let's get cruising. Welcome to Willistad, the capital of Curacao and the port our tour departs from. Today we're going to be taking a beach hop and turtle snorkel experience. We booked in October through Royal Caribbean and paid $67 each. Austin was only $64 because he was under 12. And I should point out, this was the only way he was able to get off the ship because of COVID restrictions. Even though the Odyssey is sailing at 20% capacity, this tour was full. The bus could hold about 45 passengers and just about every seat was taken. The tour bus staff included a driver and two experienced guides, Joyce and Tyler. Both were extremely knowledgeable about the island's history and were able to answer questions well beyond their prepared scripts. Unfortunately, the audio in the bus was malfunctioning and kept going in and out, but they struggled through it and shared stories covering the island's history, wildlife, and even current political and financial issues. As we passed a gas station, Joyce told us about how their refinery was operating at a fraction of its capacity because of the upheaval in Venezuela. While not the normal candy-coated tour banter we expected, it was interesting to learn a bit more about what effects the collapse had had on its neighbors to the north. Curacao is known for its near year-round breeze. As we drove along the northeastern coast, we caught a glimpse of their attempt to capitalize on it. This is the Playa Canoa Wind Park, consisting of 18 750 kilowatt turbines. When combined with its sister wind park, Terracora, they can meet up to 20% of the island's electrical demand. As I started digging through my gear, I realized I had forgotten my diving case. This was kind of crushing since I used my iPhone as my dive camera and I was hoping to capture some footage of the sea turtles. After a few more minutes of frantically searching my backpack, I resigned myself to the fact that the case just wasn't here. I made the decision, against Cindy's advice, to just use my phone with no case. After all, it's water resistant and I had taken it in the pool once or twice at home and I really never had any issues. In no time at all, we pulled off the main road into the parking lot next to All West Apartments and diving. As we got off the bus, we were handed snorkeling equipment consisting of a mask, snorkel, a life vest, but no flippers. With that, Tyler led us down the concrete stairs to play a grand eye. As the tour group clad in yellow vests began cutting through the beachgoers, I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. I don't know if they were all locals or just visitors, but it felt like we were disturbing their beach day. The beach was more rocky than sandy, which the tour description had warned about. We were glad that we took their advice and brought along water shoes. The weather was perfect and the water was cool and refreshing, you know, except for all the fish carcasses everywhere. I grew up in Florida and there's sharks and alligators in every body of water. Usually they don't bother you, but I'd never swim under a dock where people were cleaning fish. The tour guide explained there weren't any sharks because there wasn't any food for them here. Not sure I'd agree with that logic with all the carcasses, baby turtles, and tourists in the water, but we didn't see any sharks that day. Speaking of baby turtles, there were quite a few swimming around the dock. These are juvenile green sea turtles. Fully grown, their shells can get up to four feet long, and they can weigh over 400 pounds. We were instructed not to touch the turtles, and they seemed very accustomed to having all the swimmers chasing them around with GoPros. The tour guide told us they were there because of the fishermen but I didn't see any sea turtles eating any fish. They seemed more interested in the bits of vegetation floating around the shore. Which makes sense. A juvenile sea turtle's diet mostly consists of sponges, jellyfish, and seaweed. After about 45 minutes, Joyce started gathering up the group to leave. I dried off my phone and we headed back up the stairs. Once we got to the top of the stairs, we were surprised to see there were two buses now. One that we had arrived on and a new one with a working intercom system. I guess they had decided the broken intercom warranted sending out a new bus for the second half of the tour. As we drove to our second stop, Tyler continued sharing local knowledge, and now everyone could hear him too. The beach part of our beach hop is Casa Abo. It's a local favorite with amenities that include a beach bar, restroom, showers, changing rooms, and plenty of umbrella shaded chairs. Unlike our previous stop, the tour has its own roped off area on this beach. To the north, it's bordered by a rocky outcropping, which the waves crash against, but the rest of the shoreline is soft sugar sand. Once again, I grabbed my iPhone and boldly, or foolishly, swam into the turquoise surf, looking for tropicals. The area where we spent most of our time was between 5 and 10 feet deep. The bottom was mostly sandy, with small piles of rocks every few feet. 
There was plenty to see, tropical swimming all around the coral. I even found a small octopus hiding at the base of some brain coral. Here's a small school of parrotfish working on converting the coral into that nice sugar sand. And then it happened. These were the last images I was able to capture on my iPhone. The screen went black and I couldn't get it to turn back on. I had a sinking feeling that my phone was gone. Worst yet, everything I had recorded for the last six days was still on the device. The ship's Wi-Fi wasn't the greatest and almost nothing had been uploaded to the cloud yet. I headed back to the family and tried to put it out of my mind. We spent about an hour total at Casa Aba, not hardly long enough, but we will treasure our memories from here and look forward to returning in the future. The bus ride back to the port brought us past the salt flats, where flamingos are often seen feeding. Unfortunately today, they were on the far side and we barely even got a glimpse of them. At this point my phone had been plugged into the battery backup for almost 20 minutes. And when I rebooted it, I got this notification and the screen was unresponsive. Not good. Not good at all. I powered it back down and tossed it in my backpack. My fears about losing all of our pictures seemed to be coming true. I headed to the windjammer once I was back on board and got a large bowl of uncooked rice. I put the phone in the Ziploc bag with the rice and let it sit overnight. We had iFly reservations and really needed to get going. Early the next morning, I said a little prayer to the cruising gods, reached into the magical bag of rice and pulled out my iPhone. I powered it up and it was perfect. There was no issues with it. Our pictures, our videos were there. Everything was saved. I immediately downloaded everything to an SD card but right then I made a promise to Cindy, myself, and the cruising gods that I would never test the fates again and I would always keep my iPhone in the case when diving. Anyways, thank you all for joining us on this adventure. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss our next video where we'll be wrapping up our October Odyssey cruise. Again, thank you guys for joining us and keep cruising.